So what Tommy's asked me to talk about today is rigs specifically for fishing in winter. So that really means fishing on the main lock. Okay, so for anyone who's watching this who, who doesn't know the main lock at Magic's Croft, it's quite a deep venue, about top five okay, on the long pole. And then you're probably fishing another line as well, closer in, that's top four. So really, I would, if I was going to fish a match today, say, um, I'd be looking at three rigs. One for as far out as I can fish in the pole, on, right down on the bottom of the lock. And another one closer in, maybe seven metres out, which is probably up the top four on the slope down to the bottom. And I would be thinking about fishing on the bottom there as well. And I would probably, at this time of year, I might set up another rig as well for trying to catch off the bottom too. As winter progresses, I probably would, well, I'll probably still set that rig up, but I wouldn't maybe miss the catch on it later on in the year. But at the moment, it might be worth setting up. So if I had to pick one float, uh, I would pick a census Jean-Francois, okay? So that's quite a big one. Because um, it's a very versatile float and it's, it's good for winter. In winter, you're, you're looking at catching probably smaller fish. It's really different from summer because in the summer it's big fish orientated, you're fishing for carp a lot of the time. So you can get away with a sort of bigger float for bigger baits. At this time of year we're talking about fishing bloodworm and joker, so you need a more sensitive float that, uh, that can register the bites from smaller fish. Okay? So, a Jean-Francois is probably, if, if I was, say I was your age guys, and I didn't have a massive amount of money, I'm just going to get a few floats, that is the float we get. The reason is, because you could use that when it's really windy and the lock's chopping up because it's got quite a round body, okay? You don't see that. But it's also got a fairly thin stem, it's got a, pla a plastic and a plastic bristle. In the summer I've been maybe thinking about a thicker bristle, like a hollow bristle, but at this time of year a thin plastic bristle is probably better because you're looking for wee roach like that sometimes. Skimmers as well, which we can talk about, but we fish like that. So you don't want a big thick bristle because it'll pull under easier. And I'd also want to fish with a, a float that's got a wire stem. Wire stem's much more stable. And in Scotland particularly, we've got quite rough weather sometimes, so it's really calm today. So you want something that's just going to sit in the water nice and still. It's not going to move around. And then the float will be moving around, your bait will be moving around, and the fish will be going off. Oh, I'm not going near that. It just looks totally wrong. Okay, so that would be the first float I would go for. I do fish another. Today it's kind of, kind of still, so I, it's a similar kind of float. The stem's the same, wire stem, the bristle's similar. Okay, it doesn't really matter what kind it is, but you can see the body shape is a wee bit more uh, pear-shaped rather than round. So if it's quite still, I could maybe fish something like that. But generally speaking, something like that you won't go wrong with, and you fish that all the time. Okay. So how would I shot that up? Well, if I was fishing for a ro uh, roach on um, top four, so maybe I'm sitting here, right? There's me on the bank, and it goes like this. And there's the bottom, okay? So I'll be fishing on my pole. For roach, I'll probably fish here, okay? Somewhere down here. So I would be thinking about getting a one gram float for that light, okay? Now most people would shot a one gram float with a with an olivet. An olivet's just like a little uh, lead, or not lead, but a little weight like that that the line runs through. Okay, so you don't have to use a lot of shot on your rig. <coughs> and so and people will maybe have a cut off point. So their rigs maybe they fish. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.8 with shot, and then when they get to one gram, they start using an olivet because you, you're using too many shot, right? So it starts getting ridiculous. You've got that many shot on your line, all close together. So you start using an olivet because it's it's smaller, okay? That'd be an olivet. And this would be for fishing down here, and then after that, I would think about having just three shot below it, okay? So maybe three number tens, evenly spaced, okay? And I always fish a loop to my hook length and my hook. So that would be sitting down here, maybe just off the bottom for roach. Okay, because if you think about the roach coming in here, they'll be like that on that slope. 
So if it's sitting there, your bait just off the bottom, it's nice and easy for them to get them. If it's down there, they have to upend themselves like that to get it, which isn't as good for the fish. Okay, so if it's cam like this, maybe something like a point, 0 0.8 gram John Francois on that line for roach, we call that the roach line, would be an appropriate rig to use. Okay, so you've got an all vet and three droppers. As, the, as it gets colder, you might find that the bites get really funny. At the moment, you probably get bites straight away. And obviously, this is just a starting point, setting it up like that. As you work your way into fi uh, fishing, like a session, right, and you're fishing the air like that, you might find you're missing a lot of bites. Okay? So then you start playing around with the way you set all this up. So for instance, you might first of all move this up a bit, okay, and space these out a bit more so that the, your bait's coming down slower into the fish. Or alternatively, what you could do is maybe move your all of it right down just above the hook length thing to here and put your two shot just below it and just have one dropper. Or maybe two droppers, which is quite a positive way of fishing. But with Bloodworm and Joker, which is what a lot of people are fishing at the moment on the main lock, being positive can be quite a good thing because all your baits down here are on the bottom. But it plays, what I'm trying to say is there's no right and wrong way of doing it. I'm just giving you a starting point here and it pays to play about with your shotting if you're not getting bites. But I wouldn't bother with more than three shot below it. You might need a couple of small tuning shot so that the bristle, when you shot the float up, is sitting maybe about halfway down there. You don't want any of the body sticking out of the water. Because you're just looking for tiny wee fish like that. They can't pull the whole float down under the water. So you're maybe just looking for a little bit of the float showing when you've shot it upright. Okay? So that makes sense. If you're fishing out here, you could quite easily use the same float, but maybe slightly bigger. If it's still like this, you might get away with the same size, but it's going to have to be on a longer bit of line because it's deeper. Okay, but a one gram float in camp conditions could be quite good out there. If it's a bit more choppy, you might want to step up. Some of the floats I've got are 1.25, which is halfway between a gram and a gram and a half, which is quite a good size that I like to use. But generally, you're maybe looking to go up to a one and a half gram flow, okay? Because it's just that wee deep, bit deeper, it gets it down a bit quicker. Because you're not looking to catch anywhere here, you're looking just to catch at the bottom. So there's no point in it taking ages to get down. There are situations where you might want to fish with a lighter rig, okay? But just generally speaking, as a starting point, I'll put 1.5 would be a good place to start, one and a half gram down on the deck, okay? So how do I make these up? Well, in the summer, I'd probably be using 016 line. I'm not really worried about the breaking strain too much. I'm more worried about the diameter of the line. Okay? So I'm not going to say, oh, I use six pound line or anything like that. I'm more worried about the diameter um, and how thick it is. Uh, and in summer, I'd be using something like 016. But in winter, I'll scale down to 012 probably as a starting point, or even 010. I tend to use 012 simply because I can maybe use the rig a couple more times. 010 is quite fragile. It's, it's fine for fishing here once, but I, I, I don't have to make my rigs up every time I go fishing because they might be slightly damaged. So 012, and the reason why I'm using a lighter line is again because we're fishing for wee fish. So it's just a bit more sensitive, it's a bit more neat, it's a bit. Uh, more capable of fooling these wee weary fish, okay? So everything gets reduced down. And then, uh, in terms of my hoop lengths, I always make up loops, look to look hoop, hoop lengths, okay? Um, that's a very messy one, I won't use them. Uh, and these wee plastic things, which are great. There's quite a few reasons for using hoop lengths rather than just tying the line, uh, the hook on the end of the line. Okay. First and foremost, if anything happens, like you get a wee twist in it or a knot and the line's all raggled, if you just tied it to the end of your line, you then have to cut it above it. And then if you had that shocking pattern all working nice and you were catching roach, you'd have to start moving things up again to try and find the same one. But if you've got look to look, you just pull off or just nick off the, the one that's, that's damaged and you can just put another one on in seconds. Okay. And then with match fishing, you're looking to catch, to catch fish as much as possible, so you're not wasting time tying a new one on. Uh, so in terms of 
for pot cooks, I use it's the same as the floats. I scale down in winter again, um, and I use three different patterns for winter fishing on here with Bloodworm and Joker. I don't necessarily use really small hooks like 24s and 20, 26s and stuff like that. I, I normally start in a 20, but the three patterns I would use are a gamma green uh, and a gamma black. And I might use a, a Camistan B510 as well if either I'm catching, if I think I'm going to catch a few bigger fish or if I'm fishing a slider or something, I might try using that as well. So for all these, I'd probably start in a size 20. Or sorry, for roach, I would start at 20. If on this line, I've kind of forgotten about talking about but my deep line here, which we think about maybe catching some bigger bonus fish and maybe starting an 18 gamma black, right? Now that's uh, about 25% stronger than a gamma green. A gamma green is really, it's like a foot, uh, it's a, it's a Good for bloodworm fishing, basically for hooking wee bloodworm. Okay, that's exactly the same hook, but it's just slightly heavier gauge of wire, which means that you could maybe get some bonus fish out in that and be better for fishing. What did we talked about, like your blubber jam or something like that, would maybe be a better hook to fish. And that's just maybe just slightly more bulky again that hook. So I would make up maybe twenties, eighteens, and twenty twos for bloodworm, and then for Fishing for skimmers at 14 and a half meters out here, I would make up 16s, 18s, 20s, something like that. And I would start maybe with the middle one, if it's really hard, I might try changing a hook uh, to something just a little bit smaller. Or I might, uh, I'll also make them up on different uh, breaking or different diameters of line as well. So we were talking about the main line on the rigs. Okay, my hook, my hook length was always going to be just a wee bit lighter. Okay, so say, for instance, you got broken. Hopefully, you wouldn't get broken here in the winter. But if you did, then hook length would snap. You wouldn't have to remake your rig. Okay, so you would always, or if you had to get snagged and pull for a break, the hook length would break. You get your whole rig back. You put another hook length on, and you're fishing again. Everything's the same depth. You don't have to start fooling about with things. So that's another reason for for making loop to loop. Uh, hook lengths. So I actually fish quite light compared to maybe quite a lot of people. Uh, for roach I would fish, I would maybe start on, depending on the time of year, at the moment we're in November, there's still a few fish about so I might start on 0.08 hook length. Okay, but well, in December if it's really hard and I think there's going to be more roach and less big fish about, I might even go down to 0.06 which is quite light. Okay, but the only way you can do that is if you've got the right elastic to fish it as well. There's no point in fishing 06, which is a very thin, fine line, if you've got a number 8 elastic, you know, because it's not what we call balanced. Okay, so it would be worth just speaking for a minute as well about the elastics to use for these rigs. Okay, again, I think I fish quite light compared to a lot of people here. and. It would be worth you all as much as having a go at fishing like to see how you get on with it. It might not be for.